Okay, the layers. Let's go inside the sun. The core of the sun is the most important, so I'm going to talk about the core also later on because that's where the energy of the sun is made. That's where the magic takes place, sort of, to speak, okay? The core is a very dense, and it is so dense that even though it's gaseous, it has a density higher than solids on Earth, okay? Its density is 160 grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, on Earth, like the elements, the densest element, maybe platinum, is about 22 grams per cubic centimeter. So the density of the core of the sun is even higher than that. Every cubic centimeter is 160 grams. Its temperature, 15.5 million Kelvin, and its size, the radius, 174,000 kilometers. So you see, this is the core right here. The core creates the energy of the sun, and that energy starts radiating outward, you see? So the next layer is called radiative zone. Of course, you might say, how do we know all of this? Has anyone dug a hole in the sun and gone in? No. All of this is predictive, predictive ability by our mathematics equations, physics equations, chemistry equations. We're predicting that a star should look like this. No one has actually dug in there, you know, and analyzed, of course. Um, radiation zone, so that's this one here. You see the energy radiates outward, and then eventually there comes a point where instead of radiating, it starts convecting, convection zone. Okay, so radiation zone, convection zone. Together, layers two and three are 522,000 kilometers. This one and this one. Together, this one plus this one makes the radius of the sun. Okay, so together, when you add them, you will get the same number that was shown on the first slide, which is the radius of the sun. Layers one to three form the interior and together become 696,000 kilometers. Then you have layer four, which is the photosphere. So that would be, photosphere would be analogous to the Earth's crust, okay? So if I show you this one. You see here? So this would be, if by the time you get up to the crust, this would be the photosphere. You see how thin that is, the photosphere? That would be like our crust, but of course it's not a solid crust you can stand on. And then Earth in comparison would look like that. You see how small the Earth is. So that would be the uh, photosphere. And then above that would be the first layer of the sun's atmosphere called the chromosphere. Okay? So the photosphere is the visible layer of the sun. It has a temperature of 5,800 kelvins and appears yellow. It is less than 800 kilometers thick and it is analogous to our crust, okay? The chromosphere is the first layer of the sun's atmosphere. It is 19,000 kilometers wide, okay? From here to roughly about here. And it is cooler than the photosphere. So it's getting colder as you go from here to here. It's from here, it's really, really hot. Then it's getting cooler, cooler, cooler. By the time you get here, it's cool, and it's gonna get even cooler and it appears pink or red, okay? Remember, colder objects appear more reddish. We talked about that earlier. And then hotter and hotter objects appear more yellow and green and blue. So the chromosphere appears more red or pink. And you can only see it during a solar eclipse. Its temperature is about 4,100 Kelvin. Notice, this one is 5,800 Kelvin. So this one is cooler. Then you got the corona. So notice I'm jumping here. The first layer of the sun's atmosphere is the chromosphere. Then I jump to the third layer. Then we're going to come back to the second layer. The corona is the third layer of the sun's atmosphere. <coughs> if we look at this graph here, this table, it tells us the structure of the sun, and it will tell you the radius, and it will tell you the temperature, it will tell you the density and the mass fraction and so on. So what this is showing us is this. Uh, by the time we get to the photosphere, you see the size of the sun is one, okay? And then by the time you get to the chromosphere, you see that's the next one. 
uh, it stays 1-1. One, one. And then there's a zone called the transition zone at about 1.002. And then by the time you get to the corona, 1.003. And the corona goes all the way out to 2.0. So that means corona is, by the time you get to the outside of the corona, you're two times the radius of the sun. So if this is the sun, visually, the corona takes you out to about twice the size, like that. Okay, look at the temperature, 1.6 times 10 to the 17, that means 16 million Kelvin. So roughly speaking, the core of the sun is about 15 and a half to 16 million Kelvin. Then you get the temperature drops, 15 million Kelvin, 13 million Kelvin, 9 and a half million Kelvin, 6.7 million, 4.8 million, 1.2 million, 700,000, 310,000, 160,000, 52,000, uh, then you get to uh, 31,000, 14,000, and then by the time you get to the photosphere, 6,400 uh, 6, Kelvin, okay? That takes you to what we said here, 5,800 Kelvin. According to this, it's telling you it's 6,400 Kelvin. After that, what happens to the temperature? 4.6 thousand Kelvin, 4.6 thousand Kelvin, 4,100 4, Kelvin, See, that's this one here, 4,100 Kelvin. Then what? What's happening to the temperature? 4,100 Kelvin? Uh-oh, 8,000 Kelvin. Oh, something weird happened. The temperature kept dropping, then it's now going up to 8,000. Look at this. 4.7 times 10 to the fifth, 470,000 Kelvin. Wow, jumped all of a sudden. What's going on? Transition zone. That's the second layer of the sun's atmosphere. Something is causing some weird phenomenon. The temperature dropped, dropped, and then immediately went back up to 470,000, 500,000, 1.2 million, 1.7 million, 1.8 million. Hmm, weird. The temperature had dropped, and then immediately goes way, way up to millions of Kelvin, okay? And then this one tells you the density of the stuff. So you see the, the core of the sun is 160 gram per cubic centimeter, but the density drops very, very quickly. By the time you get to the outside, there's almost no density, nothing, okay? So that's the weird phenomenon that is kind of difficult to understand what's causing this. The corona extends out millions of miles and has no definite boundary. The gas in the corona gets very thin. As you saw, the density is very, very low. The temperature rises to about 1.8 million Kelvin, huge. All of a sudden, as you saw, it goes back into the millions. The transition region. There is a region between the chromosphere and the corona during which the temperature of the sun rises dramatically. That's the effect that I was showing you in the table, all the way up. And this is what we're gonna call the second layer of the sun's atmosphere. Let's look at this picture. See here, this is a good one too. It's showing you the temperature of the sun. See here, the chromosphere. See the temperature is dropping. By the time you get to the lowest temperature, that's about 4,100 Kelvin. Then the temperature goes up and then shoots back out, really, really, into the millions. And then by the time the temperature keeps increasing even, by the time you end here, it's about 1.8 million Kelvin, you see? It's almost as if the sun is shielding itself from visitors, you know? Uh, you know if you ever try to go to the sun, you have to get to millions of degrees of hot temperature before you even get to the surface. So the way I kind of think of that is like a shield. <clears throat> this is cause, this is the culprit now. What's causing this? The magnetic field of the sun, which is funneling all of the energy of the core to the outside. So the magnetic field has this property that it can channel energy from one point to another. And the core, remember, was very, very hot. And this energy is being channeled to the outside. And let's see, this picture shows us maybe this phenomenon. 
Yeah, you see here, this is the, think of this as the magnetic field, okay? And then if you have some particles here, the magnetic field is shaking them. And by the time you get to here, it's getting really, really uh, fast. This is the magnetic wave, you see? So by the time that particle is reaching here, it's going up and down, shaking very, very fast. The faster it shakes, it gets hotter. So the magnetic field channels the, the energy of the core all the way to the outside. See here, comparatively, it's cooler. You see? So by the time you get here, very, very hot. Okay, so we talked about the first uh, layer of the sun's atmosphere was the, uh, the chromosphere. Then it was the second layer was the transition region. Then the corona. After corona was the solar wind. This is the fourth layer of the sun's atmosphere and extends all the way to Pluto and beyond. And then after Pluto, it starts dying out, and then you get to the end of the sun's influence, sort of. That's called the end, the heliopause. The heliopause is basically where the sun's influence ends, and that's what I was talking about earlier. Voyager 1 and 2, they're leaving that area. Now they're out into vacuum space, completely outer space. So after you get beyond Pluto, the sun's influence sort of dies out. So this solar wind is very important because it also gives us the aurora, right? Uh, when it interacts with our magnetic field, it causes these auroras. So you can think of the solar wind kind of like this. You see the particles from the sun. As the sun is spinning, this energy is coming out from the sun. This schematic diagram illustrates how ion, ionized gas from the sun spirals outward through the solar system in a steady stream. The solar magnetic field creates sectors of variable density in the wind. Okay? 